Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Bonsoir toutes et tous. I am delighted to be here with you this evening. Three things. Listen to your doctor. Do what your doctor tells you. And most importantly, doctors know best. <laughs> I believe many of you learned this at a young age and have never stopped to challenge those paradigms. The story I'm going to tell you tonight, which is a story about choice and about the importance of personal choice, will hopefully start you thinking differently. When I'm not chasing my three beautiful Lakote student children around, Izzy Emmett and Flynn, in my professional life, I work as a sports cardiologist. For those of you not familiar with sports cardiology, we are men and women who are indeed heart doctors, but dedicate our time to the care of elite level athletes. We perform pre-participation screening. We take care of athletes when they need heart surgeries or need heart medications. And importantly, we also play a role in determining sports eligibility, which is the decision about when an athlete with a heart problem can return to the sport of their choice. I lived and worked in Boston, Massachusetts for well over two decades, and this is where this story begins. I remember the day I met Kevin like it was yesterday. He goes by Kev, his teammates, his friends, his parents called him Kev. I met him on a Monday morning. I showed up at work, it was a normal day. I received the patient list from my secretary and I read it through. Marathon runner with chest pain, cyclist with an arrhythmia, firefighter with high blood pressure. And on the last line it said, NFL disqualification visit. Now, two important points of context here. NFL stands for the National Football League. Of course, it's not real football, it's American style football. <laughs> but you all get the point. And just to help you understand a little about the National Football League, it is the single largest revenue generating sport anywhere in the world. To put this into context, the English Premier League generates $5 billion a year. The NFL generates $17 million. For the purpose of this discussion, what this means is that when a young man signs a contract in that league, his financial security is essentially guaranteed for the rest of his life, as is the financial security of his parents and his siblings. Disqualification. That is simply the doctor telling a patient with a heart problem, you can no longer play your sport. How do we do this? Well, traditionally, we turn to a document called the Bethesda Conference Proceedings. This document was written more than 40 years ago. It was written by doctors who were men and who were white. And in this document, it lists every single conceivable heart problem a young person could get, and it gives a decision, yes sport or no sport. And guess what? For just about every heart condition, the answer is no sport, with the exception of a few things. You can play billiards, you can play curling, you can go bowling, you can play golf, and if you like riflery, that's an option as well. Now, I've been doing this for a long time, but I've never young, met a young sportsman or sportswoman that went from playing football to playing billiard and was satisfied with that consolation prize, but those were our options. <coughs> Ted came to my office that afternoon and told me his story. He grew up um, in a marginalized family with poor resources. He had many siblings, and they were the victims of food shortage and hunger. He had been sexually discriminated against and he had been racially discriminated against, but he found his solace as an athlete, and he was good. He played American-style football and moved through the high school ranks, got a scholarship in college, and went on to play at one of the best college universities and earned a spot in the National Football League Combine, which is the pre-employment physical that these men go to to get selected to play on a team. Now, as part of the Combine, Kev, like every other athlete, had to undergo a medical examination. And during that examination, which was the first of his life, that was comprehensive, he was diagnosed with a problem called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now this indeed is one of the problems that can cause young athletes to drop suddenly during sport. And so Kev was told on the spot, your days of playing football were over. Now, he left that and started looking around for second opinions. And after seeing several doctors, he ended up with me. I sat and I listened to Kev, I heard his story, and I said, unfortunately, there are two facts I must share with you. One is that the risk of dying from heart disease among a young athlete is one in 50,000, and you have one of those conditions that kills young people. The second is that I have this document that I have to follow. Your condition is on that document. Your days of playing sport are over. He hung his head, he wept a bit, he thanked me, and he left. The minute he left, I realized that what I had done and what I had been doing for years was no longer the way I wanted to practice medicine. I went home that night, didn't sleep a wink. I got up in the morning, I called him and asked him to come back. And he said, why? I said, because I told you two things. I wanna make sure you understand them. And I have a question for you that I didn't ask you yesterday. He came back to my office and he said, I know one in 50,000 chance of dying during sport and I have one of those problems. What's your question? He said, I want you to tell me about risk. 
and what you think about risk in your life. And he said, well, I ride a motorcycle fast back and forth to the stadium every day. I go skydiving on the weekends for fun. And in case you don't know, I signed up to play a sport where I have a one in 2,000 chance of ending up in a wheelchair because of getting tackled the wrong way. And I said, exactly. So who am I to tell you that a one in 50,000 chance of a fatal heart problem should keep you out of this sport if you understand that risk and you're willing to accept it? He looked me in the eye and he said, can we do this together? And I said, let's go. After a lot of work, we got him eligible for the NFL draft and he signed a contract which ensured his financial security. And we did that not because I wanted him or because he wanted to, but because we collectively agreed that was the right decision. This changed the way I practice, and this has changed the way this practice is happening all over the world. After my experience with Kevin, we started writing about this and we started studying it. And it took time, but in 2020, the European Society of Cardiology released their sports cardiology document. I didn't play a role in writing it, but guess what? The concept of shared decision-making, which is working with the patient, athlete, and the doctor together to arrive at a shared decision, received a class 1A recommendation. Just this past March, we presented the results of our first 85 elite level athletes from all over the world who had gone through this process, felt good about the results, returned to sport, and had no adverse outcomes. Now, people always ask me, what if you got this wrong? What if one of the athletes that you let play died on the playing field? And my response is, I didn't let them play. We worked together to reach a decision that they felt comfortable with that integrated my medical knowledge with their personal preferences and values. And if they make that decision, they assume that risk, and I support them with that. Last year, I got a call from Kev, now in his ninth year in the National Football League, the recipient of one Super Bowl ring, and he said, I'm calling to thank you. I said, you don't, you don't need to thank me. I, I, you got to the NFL, that's great. He said, I'm not calling you to thank you for getting me to the NFL. I'm calling you to thank you for treating me not like a patient, but like a person, and letting me choose who I wanted to be. Thank you very much.